Hey guys, Sandy Son here. I uh, recently found a nice little bike path. Check it out behind me. It's got like a little creek sort of thing. You can hear the ducks quacking in the background. It's nice and secluded, so I think I'll be filming here more often because normally I'm just kind of afraid of you know people just walking by. I'm kind of well, not really camera shy per se, just shy of people knowing that I'm using a camera. It's a nice little locale. I'm also learning to uh, move the camera further away from me so you can see stuff behind me as opposed to just, you know, my big old head all the time. I'm still kind of getting used to holding it out quite this far, so we're going to take baby steps and hold it about this far. Uh, when I got off work a couple days ago, I decided to read a little bit of this book called The 4-Hour Workweek by uh, Tim Ferriss. I was really interested in it. If any of you know me personally, I'm, I just detest working long hours just for a measly paycheck, considering the amount of time that I put into it. So I've been constantly researching new ways to make money without having to work so long and so much. Did the whole thing with AdSense, but if you've been following my site for a period of time, you know kind of how that went. I earned about almost like 100, 150 bucks in the first month. That was because of uh, illegal clicks. Yeah, that really didn't turn out so well for me in the end. Uh, same thing happened with Kintera. Kintera actually happened first, then, you know, I decided to post about what happened, so it kind of discouraged the uh, illegal clicking for AdSense for a short amount of time, but they banned me anyway, so. Yeah, it really sucks because AdSense is considered, you know, the number one tool for uh, bloggers to uh, monetize their websites. Them's the breaks, I guess. I mean, and there's other ways to monetize a website. I mean, you could do, you know, I could recommend, you know, such and such service or such and such products, get like commission, you know, things like that. Those could be fun. Currently, my website doesn't pull in enough traffic for me to leverage those sorts of things. So right now, I have to uh, rely on uh, quality content. My main problem right now is that my content jumps from one topic to another. Like, most successful blogs rely on like a niche or they have like a certain focus. Well, my focus, you know, it's a personal blog, basically. If I tell that to pro bloggers, they just, you know, laugh in my face. They're like, dude, you, you know, you got to go niche. You got to either talk nothing about AdSense or talk nothing about personal development or just, you know, stick with the topic and just, you know, never stray away from it. But, you know, I just find that to be boring. Although I do see their point. I mean, sometimes the reader can get a little disoriented. You know, if he goes, he or she goes to my site, you know, looking up anime and all I'm talking about is, you know, crap that happened with my brother or, hey, I lost my dog, something about personal development, things like that. Then they're like, you know, well, what's this guy doing, you know, posting on, you know, an anime blog, you know, if he's not talking about anime all the time. And, you know, the simple fact is that, you know, I have too many interests. You know, I want to talk about too many things at once. It's hard for me to, you know, stick with one topic throughout an entire post. Because, you know, I tend to treat posts kind of like the news. You know, you talk about one subject, you know, like fire kills 11 people, such and such, blah, blah, blah. Then in other news, you know, Miracle Kitten saves, you know, the library or something like that. Honestly, that's kind of how I treated my blogs, you know, since day one. Even, you know, back in the old uh, GeoCities Anja page, I've always treated my blogs in almost like a news style format where I greet the audience, you know, with like a hello, hey, sup, you know, it's a handy son here with whatever, some kind of witty comment. A lot of people kind of got annoyed by the whole, you know, it's the Andy's on her. I guess they didn't think I was black enough or something. So I decided to stop doing that. I do kind of like introducing myself for once in a while, but since, you know, I got my own site, it's, it's kind of, you know, moot to do things like that, because if you're going to theandyson.com, you know who's going to be blogging. It's going to be the Andyson. There's not going to be, you know, some other weird person blogging on my site, because, you know, it's a personal blog. I could do that. I could, you know, hire guest bloggers, but I feel at this time it's not really necessary. Classic example of me, you know, hopping from topic to topic, I completely lost track of what I was talking about, which was uh, monetizing my website. Now, obviously, the whole AdSense, Kintera thing didn't work out. Right now, I'm running stuff like AdBright, Chickada. Chickada is actually earning me a little bit of money. Now, by little, I'm not talking about 10 bucks, 20 bucks, or even 100 bucks. I'm talking like, you know, maybe 10 cents a day. Now, that's being generous, so that's actually exaggerating. It's slowly beginning to build me some kind of income. Obviously, I can't live off of 10 cents a day. That's beginning to build stuff but I need something else that'll help generate the income because obviously even you know the big name sites like Steve Pavlina 
and Jolcom, they they don't you know just use AdSense. They use you know a variety of products. AdSense and Contera and all those just happen to be you know parts you know of their streams of income. They rely on multiple streams of income instead of just you know one. They do you know some joint venturing. Steve does uh, public speaking. He has a variety of sources of income. I read a little bit of the Four Hour Work Week by uh, Tim Ferriss. I thought it was, you know, really interesting. I only read like the first 30, 33 pages because I didn't want to spend, you know, all night at Walmart, and I didn't have 16 bucks to spare to buy it. Even though currently I have a little under 800 in the bank right now, but you know, I'm trying to, you know, not frivolously spend so much so that way I can get a car before snowfall, which is my goal. But anyway, I read uh, the book by Tim Ferriss, for our Work Week. I thought it was really interesting and in how he kind of outlined outsourcing what he does, you know, in order to earn income so that way he can do what he wants to do instead of doing, you know, what he has to do for income, which, you know, is my main philosophy because ideally I want to do what I want to do in life, you know, when I want to do it. I don't want to, you know, be like, oh, well... <sighs> It's almost six o'clock. I got to get ready for work. So sorry, guys, I can't hang out with you. You know, I don't, I don't want my life to end up like that. You know, I don't want to, to mold my life around my work. Have to be like, well, I can't meet you guys because, you know, I got to work on this project or, you know, I got to you know, I got to come into work. You know, when you get off 10, 11 o'clock. OK, you know, I don't want to do that. And uh, some people, you know, they're fine working for a living, but, you know, I'm not one of those people. I don't want to uh, have to go in day in and day out doing something that I don't enjoy doing. Yeah, honestly, I, I really don't enjoy being a cashier at Walmart. I think it's, it's very tedious, it's very boring, and I feel very replaceable. And I am. See, that's kind of the goal with my life is, you know, I want to be, you know, indispensable. I don't want to, you know, just quit doing something and, you know, you know, just can't say, okay, you know, next. If I stop something, it has, you know, an effect. Like I said before, I don't even want a job, period. You know, I want to be able to earn income